Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to show you why I'm so bullish on Emphase and why I think it could be a very good opportunity to buy. Now I want to be clear, I'm not fully done with my due diligence. I'm still, you know, collecting data and posting videos about my journey. Uh, I had a very good talk with uh, Vitaly from Finance Junkies uh, yesterday on the channel, so you can go ahead and check it out if you want to. I really enjoyed that. I hope to have him back on the channel. But I was watching Meet Kevin, and he did the best explanation of why I think Emphase is such a op good opportunity now. So I wanted to play that for you and then give you my two cents on it. So please make sure you're subscribed. You can follow me on Twitter at VinceIsBullish. And let's get into the video. Uh, what I think we're going to see is something where you end up with uh, rates that have risen substantially to are about 5.5%. Uh, and uh, then what you're as, as sort of the upper bound. Uh, and then what I think we're going to see is this flat, right? So we might end up seeing, let's draw that a little straighter. There we go. So let's call that the uh, July level. So we'll call that July 23. It would not shock me to see a Federal Reserve that keeps rates at five and a half until July 2023. And here's the crazy part. You ready for this? Election season. He means 2024. Is really going to heat up. And I'm not like tinfoil hat here. I just think it's going to be oddly convenient how this aligns. Okay, ready for this? And, and mind you, I'm saying this here in August of 2023. So it could be wrong here, but I, this is how things are lining up with today's data. This is what I would be expecting. We sit at five and a half all the way to July 2023. Now all of a sudden we start seeing unemployment rates rise. And then what do we see during this election cycle, which I'm going to draw. I guess I should draw that as uh, let's draw it as sort of like this um, box here. We'll call this little box here election cycle. Now uh, let's draw it like this. Yeah, there we go. We'll call that election cycle time, which would be your August of next year to November uh, of next year, maybe even December of 2024. I think during this window, you're actually likely to see rates end up doing something like this, a dramatic plummet to where you could see right before the election, some kind of pretty wild minus 2%. Now, markets are not pricing that in right now. Markets are actually only pricing in minus 1%. But I think staying at this high level to just 100% make sure inflation is gone and the economy is nearly crushed will end up leading to a Fed that prefers rapid rate cuts, rapid and aggressive rate cuts. That's what I think. So uh, unfortunately, that means this, this higher for longer pain is likely to affect interest rate sensitive sectors more uh, and that's problematic it's problematic for autos it's problematic for solar it's problematic for debtors it's potentially also problematic for housing that higher for longer pain as soon as we get to that rapid decline in rates though all of these sectors will have a massive tailwinds behind them and so this is where a lot of people will say okay so are you saying we should buy autos solar and stuff like that and you know have debt or whatever it should we should we just buy those things in the summer of 2024 then you know right before potentially those rate cuts and while that is theoretically a good idea usually the stock market aggressively starts pricing in these sorts of rate cuts nine to twelve months before they come which actually means you would potentially hope to see some of this rate cutting priced in starting between November and maybe May of next year. Who knows, but it's something to consider. Uh, that's just my thesis. Uh, the whole, like, the, it's entirely possible that the Fed ends up stair-stepping rates down a little bit more where, where you kind of slowly lower rates and you do end up getting that 1%, they slow walk rates down. But I don't think the Fed is going to do that. And I want to be very clear about why I, I think that. I think the Fed has worked so hard to get to this level you know, sitting in their pizza boardroom meetings. And okay, so normally you w I, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that, okay, it's going really bad for Emphase now. They have been a very, very nice growth company. 
super good growth. But next quarter, uh, they have guided for their first decrease uh, in you know quarterly, not quarterly, but year over year gr uh, growth in a quarter since I think they have been public. So that's a really, really big warning sign. And that's also what I want to do uh, more research on. But that is clearly an effect of the interest rate hikes. I believe that solar is not going away. I believe that residential solar and, you know, other usage of solar has a very big place in the future power that we're going to need. Like Elon Musk says that we are going to need so much electricity that probably any uh, estimations you have for the future is way off. So we know that this is a temporary thing. And had we not had these uh, rapid interest rate increases and M phase would just keep going the, the way it has been going, you would never be able to buy the stock at a good price. So I believe that this exact thing that he's saying gives a very, very interesting opportunity because M phase finally came back down to earth and we're 70% off from the, the highs, but the problem is we don't know how low it's going to go. We don't know what is, a, you know, nobody can predict the future of the, of the stock market. And again, the very logical thing would be to say, yeah, but we just buy back when the rates are low, but it will be priced back in at that time. And M phase will be at $300 again, because people will know that, okay, this wave is coming. So you kind of have to be greedy when others are fearful and you have to be fearful when others are greedy have i heard that somewhere before uh, anyways i don't know just sounds so familiar and also the situation sounds so familiar anyways so i hope you enjoyed this video this was really like one of the best explanations that i i saw on this and this is exactly how i feel and that's why i'm looking so heavily into that company so let me know in the comments what you think please make sure you subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video ciao ciao